Hey, this is Mindless Gonzo, the schmuck that gave you Princess Molestia dubs. You're watching The MBS Show. Hello and welcome to The MBS Show, episode number 109. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hey, Norman. Hey, everybody. Hey, James. How are you, man? I'm fine. Can't complain. I'm doing okay. Good Saturday afternoon. Yep, yep. Episode was fun. Episode was fun. Can't wait to review that. So, anywho... Um, joining us today, our guest for this week is Mindless Gonzo. This is way too early for me. It is. What time is it for you, man? Like 11 a.m. or something? 12.39 p.m. 12.39 p.m. is too early for you? I do not like mornings. That's why I always sleep until the crack of the afternoon. Well, not more of that. You're going to be waking up early. Early. Come on. Crap. Oh my god, I'm going to go Ernie Hammer on you. I'm going to go Drill Sergeant. Come on. Do it. I'm going to go full metal jacket on you. Mm. I'm joking. I'm joking. Look at that. <laughs> In case you guys didn't know, I am kind of friends with Gonzo. That's why I am allowing myself to treat him like that. This is going to be a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> it already is. Indeed. So anyway, Gonzo, how are you, man? Uh, I'm okay. Need some coffee? Got my own, pretty mm-hmm. much just uh, downing a can of root beer. So, Gonzo, tell us what you do, and tell us why, out of all the people that were not banging on our door because we are not all that well, well known, why did we decide to bring you to this show that is tangentially related to ponies? Well, first off, let me just <laughs> let me just answer the first question, and then we'll go on to the second one. I'm basically a voice actor. I do voiceover dubs of a lot of tumblers, a lot of comics, um, just out of, you know, fun, hobby. And I've also dabbled in um, some gameplay, some ma- some mashup producing. I'm also just an overall kind of fun guy, I guess. <laughs> wow, why aren't you full of yourself? <laughs> I'm not sure what to say, really. <laughs> Everybody said. Everybody says I'm like an awesome great guy, and then I'm like the like the second coming of Christ or something. But I'm that's, just but Gonzo, Gonzo, you're going to die for our sins. Let's well, not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to find we're going to find about that soon, soon. Anywho, <laughs> be, before anyone passes on the torch, we need to ask you the four important questions, Gonzo. And question number one is, who's your favorite character? Oh, it's kind of tough because I'm always torn. I'm always torn between a couple of characters. The three top ones are sadly Rarity, Fluttershy, and Miss Harsh Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> That's rare. Miss Harsh Winnie. I never heard that one before. It uh, is, yeah, it is true. She was basically a, a one-time character, but she got like two appearances so far. She was basically well in the first one, being splashed about <laughs> while. Uh, Twilight when their friends were mistaking some random passenger from a train for an equestrian games inspector. And then there was her second appearance, and um, which is basically just and, – and sorry about this because some people might like Rainbow Dash. But I was loving how Harshini was pretty much ma- making Rainbow Dash stop being you know Rainbow Dash, making her all proper and professional and not like a loose cannon that just does what she wants because she is freaking Rainbow Dash. <laughs> okay, okay. It's good to have a counterpoint. Besides, I think it's pretty much like the first – Kind of like nice stick in the mud that TV show has had in its in in its four seasons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it, it is it is a breath of fresh air to have Miss Harswini, a character like Miss Harswini in the show. I like her too. I like her a lot mm-hmm. for reasons <coughs> cougar, <laughs> but <laughs> but she is she is a very good character. Okay, and Gonzo, what about your favorite episode? <sighs> so far, um, the only one that still stood. Uh, despite all that's been happening in season three and now season four, so far the only one that's still a little bit close to me is still Party of One. Mm, that's a good one. Insane Pinkie Pie for the win. 
insane Pinkie Pie, I guess. I, that's funny because that's not a rarity episode and that's not a Fluttershy episode. Birdie's got some good episodes and good points, like in, especially in uh, uh, Look Before You Sleep. But I was just, I'm not very fond of Pinkie Pie and just watching her just like breaking down. And um, I don't know, I, I guess I just got a thrill just seeing Pinkie Pie in misery because I'm not very <laughs> thrilled of Pinkie Pie as of late. I still get a thrill of Pinkie Pie's misery as of late uh, because of how she's sadly written not as an element of laughter, but an element of annoying little pink pony. Uh, I, I think you can join the bandwagon then. So anyway, Gonzo, how did you become a fan of the show? Long story short, um, I used to live with my parents, and um, I wasn't able to find a job much to satisfaction. They were demanding money out of me. So basically, they just said, you know what, I think I had enough of this slacker, and I was all, all like, I think I had enough of these closed-minded. That's not a word! Because they seriously think that it's easy to get a job, because the economy has been the same since the 1950s. No, it ain't. <laughs> so basically, they kicked me out, and it was in uh, summer of uh, 2011. It was a hot one. It was a hot summer. And um, I had to go to, all the way to a family friend's place because I got nowhere else to go. I was kind of you know, a little bit down because, well, family rejected me because I'd rather be dealing with making videos because I've been making videos ever since uh, college. And instead of trying to look for a job that I'll never be able to get because of the current economic times. So I was pretty much sitting at a friend's place, uh, staying at a friend's place until I was able to get a place of my own and uh, signed up with uh, uh, some uh, uh, local government assisted uh, living and whatnot. And basically, I was just looking around for anime, and then all of a sudden, I happened to encounter the scenes from Best Night Ever. Somehow, it was queued up in a uh, unrelated search, and I was like, mm, maybe I'll go at it, look at it. And, well, long story short, you are going to love me. Pretty much got me thinking, you know what, maybe this night can give me a chance. So, yeah. A raging Fluttershy at the gal uh, screaming that <laughs> screaming at the top of her lungs just got me into the show. <laughs> oh, no, I do love that scene. Oh, that is why the best night ever, besides the song, is my favorite episode. I liked everything about the best night ever. You know that is a very that is a very cool way to get into the show. However, it sucks that you actually had to go through such a horrible thing like having to get kicked out. That sucks. Did you did you manage to recover? I mean, I know that you are not uh, you are not employed anywhere uh, right now. But... Well, uh, I'm I'm perfectly fine with what I'm with what's going on right now. I mean, I don't have a job, but. Uh, Thanks to uh, my qualifications, which is basically having a mental disability and just having only a high school diploma to go on and not much else, I'm currently living on a, a state program, which sends you a monthly check for so much dollars for you to spend on living, like rent, the bills, and food. And, well, I'm talking to you guys right now instead of, like, not having a computer because some guy stole it from me to sell for crack. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sadly, I live in a small town, but unfortunately, the drug war is everywhere. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, boy. <laughs> Next time you have to bolt it to the, to the, to the table or something. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Bad idea because then they will take the computer and the table. Yeah, it's better not to do that. <laughs> oh, boy. But anyway, Gonzo, we wish you the best, man. We wish you the best. You deserve better, man. Uh, well, I'm okay with what I got. It's not much, and there's a lot of lacking, but it's okay. Yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Positive outlook. That's always good. Anyway, Gonzo, thanks for sharing your stories with us. And let's move on to the next topic, news time. In today's news time, Rainbow Rocks, the novel, is a prequel, and don't let it sway your opinion on the movie. If you didn't know, there will be a novel for My Little Pony Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks. The first chapter of the novel is available now for free on iTunes. According to Mike Vogel, the VP of Development of Hasbro Studios, fun pony fact for the day, Rainbow Rocks novel is a prequel to the upcoming movie and expand the story we are telling with the shorts. And Ishii Rudell director for the movie had this to say don't let the first chapter of rainbow rock sway your opinion on the upcoming eg movie have a little faith in us uh, links can be found in the show notes 
So guys, what do you think? This is going to be fun, right? Well, this is kind of throwing people off. If this Rainbow Rock shorts are based on the novel and not the actual scenes from the movie, this might be a little difficult because nobody aside of the nobody who has yet to even look at the one trailer that they have out now, nobody's going to be able to determine what's really going on and uh, what's all going to be in the movie. All we know is. For some odd reason, Twilight's back in the uh, high school that she had to go to to stop Sunset Shimmer. They regained their rainbow power, and evidently it's a battle of the bands, I think. Well, it could either it could go either way right now because uh, you remember how in the first movie they said that there is a Twilight Sparkle in the, in the city with a dog named Spike that looks exactly like that one. Uh, we could have Twilight Sparkle coming back, yeah. But what about what if it's this other Twilight Sparkle? That would be kind of like a mind. That's not a word. To uh, yeah, with, uh, just, excuse uh, my French, but yeah, that will kind of be that. But anyway, gent, I read the first chapter of the book and. It's not that universe's Twilight. It's a Pony Universe Twilight. It doesn't explain how she got into the world yet. There's a second short of the Equestria Girls thing, and it's about Rainbow Dash versus Trixie in a dueling guitar. We'll get into that later. And in Chapter 2, there's a chapter called Guitar Centered. And that's the short. Yeah, that is the short that got released that future Rainbow Dash and Trixie. Yeah. And technically, right, all the shorts are related to the book. Because in chapter 16, music to our ears. So, you know, makes sense. I wasn't really thrilled about the music to our ears because I'm not a very avid fan of dubstep. In fact, I'm not really liking dubstep. <laughs> oh, but it was good. It was so much fun. I'd rather listen to songs with meaning and lyrics, not something that sounded like it was made with a computer and a synthesizer and the wash and the spin cycle of a Maytag washer. <laughs> <laughs> but then you had so much fun. Uh, dubstep is definitely not made for everyone. However, I think this movie, I am really hyped for it. However. Mm-hmm. More than the first one, it does look like Hasbro went and, and did a checklist saying, okay, what does the fandom like? <laughs> okay, the fandom likes Skrillex, they like uh, Vinyl Scratch, and uh, they like the Whoops, uh, and uh, uh, they like Magical Girl stories. <laughs> oh, oh, and the Humanist uh, Funner, don't forget about that. Okay, we're going to bring yeah, back the Humanist Funners. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, if they were to really look at what we like, I doubt they're going to be able to air it. <laughs> yeah, you know, they will have to put an MC-17 no, uh, no, right no, that. No. It will be the first. Album. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it will be Fritz the Cat all over again. Oh, but, but anyway, gents, um, I do like what they're doing with their marketing because – the book is a prequel to the movie, and the shorts are related to the book. And that's cool. That's cool in my books. This book that kind of ties in with the, with the movie, mm-hmm. every, e- ever since Hollywood uh, has been uh, a, a, a money, money-making machine, ever since then, they have been doing books and novelizations of movies that tie in with the movie, and mm-hmm. they usually are retellings of the film mm-hmm. or direct carbon copies of the actual screenplay. Few times I have seen something that is kind of like a prequel or a follow-up or something that complete, completes what the movie is about. So seeing this kind of merchandise that it's not the novelization of the movie, it's a prequel or like a sequel or whatever... I am really actually I'm really I'm looking forward to read that book. Looking forward to read that. See how it is. Same here. I can't wait to buy it, man, because it's fun. And you know what? It ties us down before we get to watch the movie. And it links with the shorts that are coming out on the Hub Network on YouTube. Anyway, moving on. So anyway, moving on to the next news. Rainbow Rocks related, by the way. Here are the writers for the Rainbow Rock shorts. Last week, we mentioned that there will be seven Rainbow Rock shorts. This week, we know who wrote them. In a tweet by Megan McCartney, she mentioned that the writers for Rainbow Rocks shorts are Natasha Levinger, Josh Haber, Amy Keating Rogers, and Cindy Morrow. Links can be found in the show notes. So, yay! This is fun. We got most of the writers from the show. 
Amy Heaton Rogers. That sounds familiar. Yeah, because, which episode does she wrote? Uh, she wrote Fall Weather Friends, A Friend Indeed, um, A Pinky Pride. Uh, today's episode, which is testing, testing one, two, three. Philly Vanilli, uh, the best night ever. Oh, so she's the one responsible for probably making Pinkie Pie much more annoying than she needs to be. Hey. <laughs> I know who to blame now. No, come on, don't say that, because she pretty much gets Pinkie Pie right. Pinkie Pie is that level of annoyance. Hey. But anywho, these are, these, these are some good writers. Like, um, I think James and I agree that Josh Heber did a good job on last week's episode, right? Mm. I will say one thing. I already knew that Natasha Levinger was going to be one of the writers for uh, for the Quest Girls. But I knew that like a year ago, a year and a half ago or something. The first time that they announced the new writers for uh, season three and season four, the first time they announced these writers, um, Natasha Levinger's, uh, Levinger's name came out, came up, and uh, it was related to a possible future My Little Pony movie. Ah. And I thought that she was the original writer for the first Equestria Girls film. I didn't know that it was going to then be Megan McCarthy. Yeah. So when they announced that one of the writers for the Rainbow Rocks uh, shorts was Natasha Levinger, I wasn't surprised. I was like, yeah, I knew that. I was expecting that. Mm, okay, okay. Well, I can't wait. I, I am curious about uh, Guitar Center. Who wrote that one? Because that was a good one. That was Amy Keating Rogers. Really? Yes. Oh, cool. One of Megan McCarthy's tweets revealed that it was Amy Gideon Rogers who wrote that episode. Yeah, that little short. So anyway, um, I, I don't think we can add anything more to this one. So let's move on to the next one. And the next one is Rainbow Rock's short is titled Guitar Centered. It's out. I, I, there's a script here I wrote down, but it's pointless for me to read it. Just go watch it. Links are in the show notes. I like it, boys. What do you, what, what about you guys? Eh, it was decent, although uh, I don't know why that was kind of needed. They could have looked at the price tag and spared everybody the guitar <laughs> battle, but <laughs> we all know Trixie couldn't afford that kind of guitar. I mean, ugh, the price tag, that's almost a, <laughs> that's almost crazy high. You know what? I'll say that that, that was rule of funny. Uh, personally, I loved the short I loved it. I it gave me a very Scott Pilgrim versus the World feel. Mm-hmm. That, it did. Yeah, because would you, it, there is that one scene in Scott Pilgrim versus the World where he's fighting uh, ex, uh, the evil ex number three, the vegan guy, and they are having a shred off, and they are literally fighting with their guitars, and it's exactly the same all the way down to Rainbow Dash turning into a Equestria Girl. A Super Saiyan with the, the, the ears and the wings going to the counter, paying for the guitar, and nobody but some guy. It's like, yeah, I just turned into, into a magical girl, and nobody cares. Woo! A magical girl with wings and horse ears. She went furry, y'all. <laughs> I was surprised at that. Like, I was surprised, and nobody was surprised. Like, what, what, what? Am I the only one here? Eh, she probably turned into a cosplayer. Or it's probably like Blake from Ruby. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, personally, I really enjoyed it. If every short is going to be like that, it's going to be. Uh, I, I'm going to really enjoy them. That was fun. Yeah, I love it. I, I just love it. Yeah, I, I favored it. Now, guys, go watch it for you guys in the live stream. You guys are listening. Go watch it because it's fun. But anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we got Mindless Gonzo. Awesome guy and really talented. So Gonzo, mind telling us who you are and what you do to the people who do not know who you are? Well, in case people have missed it the first time around, I do voiceovers, I make comic dubs, I do play games, I also do some mashup producing on the side. I think that's pretty much it for right now. Oh yeah, I also deal with fanfics, and some of them is not very uh, clean for some things. What would you say is easier to do? Like, is it a fanfic reading or a um, Tumblr dub? Well, I think depending on the length of the dub, the Tumblr, uh, but sometimes the fanfics, it's, it's sometimes it's harder to take because I'm always sent a bunch of fanfics and some people are like, please, Gonzo, read this. And some of these are, they're not very, uh, they're not very good. Some of these are not very good. Some of these are a little too much to handle. In fact, I ended up completely turning down one. You know what? Fair enough. And it's good to have a set of standards 
where you have to say, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. That's good. So I'm currently on your um, DeviantArt page, and I do see a lot of fix. Do you also write? I do a little bit of writing on the side, yeah, a little bit, because it depends on what I would think at the time or if I was just bored, I don't have any video ideas. Out of all the Tumblr dabs that you have done, uh, this is, I know this is kind of like a loaded question, because it is difficult to pick a favorite, especially when you are very critical Indeed. of your own work. But Indeed. which one would you say is the one you're the most satisfied with? Ah, uh, that's even more difficult. Cold because uh, I winged um, Pink Amina and it was a little satisfying. I also winged um, Miss Rarity and I thought I did pretty well on that. And uh, Researcher Twilight and well, I I sometimes have I sometimes this may be a little strange for me to say, but I was also liking to dub Princess Molestia for a bit. Yeah, that's actually that's how I got to know you because you did the dubs for Ask Princess Molestia. Yes. So yeah, it's kind of difficult to choose. How how did you manage to get uh, voice actors like it was Rina Chan? Rina Chan was just a one time kind of deal going through auditioning and whatnot. Yeah, how uh, did you manage to get her to voice uh, Princess Luna? I think. Um, I don't. I think she did Luna at one point. Really? All I all I remember Rena Chen dealing with is I think uh, well I can't remember. Um, was it Twi- I, I think it was Twilight Sparkle on one of the Little Miss Rarity redubs. Well, yeah, in the redubs, yeah, she did Twilight, and she also did Twilight in a uh, a, a little uh, little uh, little. Um, collection of comics from Ask Sketch, Sketchy Twilight or something like that. Yeah. Dealing with a, a little epic epic meal time of its own. Ah, I remember that one. Yeah, done by the same uh, guy who did uh, who does that. Uh, uh, that. That one Tumblr that went down eventually, and now it's kind of like coming back. It's the... I, I don't think it has a name in particular, but it's that traditionally it sketched out uh, version of Twilight Sparkle. Uh, it didn't really go down. It's just it just it was Wait inactive for quite a bit. I yeah, believe. it had a hiatus, hiatus. How would you pronounce that word? I guess. With all of your dubs, like there are many people that uh, there are many people that will just dub the 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 Tumblr posts and that's it, and they will try to like give them the uh, a level of gravitas or like a level of of seriousness to it. You add a, a lot of comedy to it, a lot of funny funny bits. You will make your own comments on the side. You will suddenly cut to a clip of John Stewart completely shocked and then say, go on. <laughs> <laughs> so y- you add your own level of comedy to it. Is that for um, is that for a personal decision or do you do it intentionally to like make it more accessible and take some uh, take some levity out of it? Well, a little bit of both, really, because um, I thought that might as well just uh, put what I was thinking when I was seeing this and uh, putting it into the video, and hopefully people will agree about how I was thinking about it. Sometimes it'll be funny, sometimes it'll be not. It all depends on how the person sees it. And um, a lot of people do tend to agree with some of the stuff that I ended up putting (laughs) in as extra. (laughs) <laughs> like in several instances, some of those disgusting things that Molestia does that I don't even know why it was even po- why it was even drawn. I, yeah. I literally, <laughs> I literally gagged at some of the stuff because seriously, is that is that really one of those fetishes that those strange fetishes that they dabbled about? <laughs> because. I really, I really, I really like that because it turns the narrator and the uh, the, the voice actor into a into a character. It's like an om- omniscient narrator. It's actually really fun. Yeah. It's a little <laughs> bit of both. Intentional or just a little of what I thought of when I saw that. So lately I've seen that you have had a lot of problems dealing with YouTube and the way that YouTube is treating your uh, your dubs and your account and limiting and sending you uh, notes and everything. Can you please 
brief us on what is going on and why apparently this system is so inherently flawed? I don't know, really. All I know is, is that I ended up having like a, a, a community uh, strike against me from October that I, I forgot what it was because evidently I probably deleted the video. You know, and uh, it's, it went. It hadn't gone away at the time that all of a sudden I started getting more. The first one, I mean, I mean the second one. Sorry, uh, um, for some odd reason, is I posted a casting call for uh, a future comic dub, and sadly the comic had to be hosted elsewhere instead of Deviant Art or Ink Money or something like that because I didn't I didn't want to re-upload the, to those sites and be called a uh, art thief or whatever. So I had to upload it to uh, well. I'm sorry to say. That's not a word. And have it organized there because the guy's DeviantArt is just a big, giant mess that he has yet to organize for a long time. Wow. I ended up, I ended up like reposting it with his permission and everything. In fact, he was thrilled about it because he liked how I was taking interest in the comic dub, and I liked it because – even though it has some aspects that I was not very fond of, it was very well written and uh, very well drawn out because the guy does it in mostly traditional with pens and uh, color pencils and whatnot. So it was really a good comic, and I thought this deserves a little bit of dubbing, even though it's still currently a work in progress as yet to conclude. And I was opening up casting call for the video dub, and. I ended up getting a few applicants, but for some odd reason, somebody I, – I, seriously, I warned everybody the, that uh, the link that I posted was to a site uh, that's mostly infamous for you know outlandish, not safe for work materials. But the comic itself is not really explicit. It just had a lot of fluff and a lot of boom, boom being revealed. I don't know, I, I don't know how to word that without being you – know, <laughs> just, word just word it right away and don't, don't worry about it. Anyways, it does have Fluttershy. It's everybody's there and throw. And um, unfortunately, I guess that warning in and, of, in and of itself, even in video or description or – well, everywhere on that page that I could think of, I put that warning pretty much saying that it's on this kind of site that's known for it. it's not safe for work material and that this video and the comic will contain not safe for work stuff. Unfortunately, nobody even bothered to listen, and it was flagged for being a scam video. Okay, hang on a minute. So it, it had all of that stuff. All references to NSFW stuff and all that, and he got flagged for it being a scam video, a casting call for calling for voice actors? In a sense, yeah, this sounded a little outrageous. No, my luck, it was probably one of several trolls that's been after me because bronies are scum, and they got nothing better to do than to harass all sorts of bronies and flag them enough to delete their whole entire channel. I yeah. mean, if you're scamming people, yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, you're going to get flagged, no problem. That That's how law works. But you are not... Like, what kind of scam it is to to uh, ask people to voice act on one of your videos? Like, you are not asking for money. You are not asking for funds. That makes no sense. That It pretty much reveals that the what? YouTube system of flagging is flawed because you can flag anybody for whatever. And you don't need to give... Seriously, evidence. this... This one troll that's been after me seriously ended up flag, trying to flag another one of my VA friend's videos saying that it was a grotesque and inappropriate video because it was gross. That's all he wrote on a little thing of his report that says, why was this being flagged? Okay. It was my friend's comic dub where it was basically just actually adding – Spike to the whole picnic with Mod Pie and Spike falling in love because Mod Pie liked rocks and proud of Spike for being a brave dragon because he brought a precious rock from, you know, the area infamous for Diamond Dogs. Yes, I remember that comic was featured on a question daily. Isn't the one that ends with Spike saying, oh, my God, I found my waifu? Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that was featured on a question daily. That was actually rather clean. Are you saying that they – wow, wow. Uh, People. This guy will Dance. probably. This guy, I don't know. 
uh, will probably get away with it because he ended up doing it to me because of the casting call. And it just happened to be the second warning because of the first strike from October that I can't remember what it was for. And when you get the second strike, second community strike, your account gets locked up. You can't do anything about it. You can view videos, but you can't search for them. You can't last for long on their vid- on the video page. You can't look up your video manager. You can't look at your home page. You it can, goes straight to wow. where it goes straight to your little features page, and it tells you what what how your account is standing up, and it'll say that until two weeks is up. For me, it will be locked up to about the fifteenth of April. The first time this happened was around March eleventh uh, or March tenth. I basically had to wait for a while so I can regain my account because of this troll who unfortunately flagged it. I tried to appeal for it, but YouTube is siding with the troll and saying that his grounds are pretty much legit. Your video is going to be flagged, and you're not going to be able to repeal again within 60 days. Well, but you know that YouTube is not people. It's just a robot. It's like a, it's like an automatic system that files up a complaint, and this troll has managed to crack up, crack it up, and making it work. And sadly, it's so automated, I can't even get a hold of an actual person. I tried to contact them through Google customer support, and unfortunately, they're so replaced with the machines and whatever. I gave up because the only phone that I could do it with is long distance prepaid, and I didn't have enough minutes for it. You know. You are not the only one getting this kind of trouble, like people are mentioning on the chat. Even Angry Joe is I getting know. problems with YouTube. So, Angry Joe, Total Biscuit. In fact, uh, a lot of people are having problems with this, and it's because of YouTube's broken system that they're not bothering to fix or even bothering to even have people look at and think maybe there is a troll out there that's screwing people up and making people's lives miserable instead of actually letting a computer think – you're doing all the work and it's causing problems it's it's flagging stuff that doesn't even need to be flagged it's even shutting down on channels that have the legal rights to post what it would post in fact if memory serves me watchmojo.com was taken down at one point before people had to complain to it and uh, the content was restored and everything so, you know what, it's ha- it has gotten to the point that it's not so much about what the videos are all about, but just what the people think of those doing the video. Like, if you're a brony doing a video on YouTube, you're likely going to get hit because, you know, well, the U- first of all, the YouTube community is, ban- is a bunch of... That's not a word! Dude, uh, everybody on the internet can and will be... That's not a word! I know that it's this video is going to be posted on YouTube, but the comment section of some videos is just disgraceful. It's like they rather waste time barraging on a video that they could have easily closed out of and look for something else. They would rather waste time barraging a video instead of doing the actual right thing, closing a video or clicking back or just closing out the browser altogether. They're rather... It's, it's it boggles the mind, really. It is something difficult to understand. Uh, also, didn't you also get an, uh, uh, a strike for, like, because it said your account is underage? Seriously, after I was free from being locked up and the uh, first strike was expired, I somehow got another copyright, uh, not a copyright strike, a community strike. And it was towards Princess Molestia, sadly. It was the second video. Uh-huh. And it literally – I literally have the copy of – I literally have screen caps of the email. And I'm trying to make sense of it all, but I don't know. It says that the YouTube community the guy, the YouTube community has flagged one or more of your videos inappropriate once it's flagged, da, da 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 As your account is under the minimum age required to view age-restricted content, the video in question has been removed. Yeah, apparently the video got removed not because of the content of the future, that by the way, as, as raunchy Princess Molestia was, it shows nothing, and whenever something was shown... You censored it, or like you put a, a, a funny picture on it, or have it age restricted by you and not by you know the YouTube community. Yeah. So if you 
try to access unless you have a YouTube account and you are of legal age, you cannot view those videos. So this is starting to make less and less sense. It's like the YouTube situation just goes is is going beyond control. It's broken, and no my luck, it's a troll that's exploiting this broken system, and I'm about to lose all my hard work over this troll. Well, but you're already doing something about that, right? Or aren't you? I can't. No, I mean you're not. Do- I mean not dealing with YouTube. You're going to other places. You're going to Daily Motion, right? Well, I got an well, I got an alt YouTube account that I'm. That's a little bit more freer now. I've also got Daily Motion. I've also got um, a Vimeo account, and I've also uh, just started with Zipcast. In fact, I re-uploaded a Second Princess Molestia video on Zipcast, and it's pretty much free. In pretty much open and, va- and free to view by anybody. Okay, so I think we have delved uh, deep enough on the YouTube uh, side of things. Like we have had, we have had enough of that. <laughs> it, it is a miserable situation that affects everybody, um, the well-known people and the little men. It, it is, it, it is a very unfortunate situation, really. It's a train wreck. It's just a terrible, terrible train wreck. And YouTube hasn't been like wasn't like this at the at the beginning. But then again, you become popular, and this is what happens. And yeah, it's just it's sadly you get famous, you gather all sorts of attention. I mean, all sorts of attention, even the bad. You can pretty much ask just about any infamous celebrity; they can tell you that sometimes you get a lot of bad publicity. Because of the uh, – your fame is pretty much um, attracting a lot of the uh, good and the bad. I mean like you get a lot of people who admire you, but you also got the paparazzi who's willing to try to document that one slip of yours and blow it out of proportion. Well, well, you are going to get better than that. You're going to recover. I hope. Ah, you will, you will. Like, if, if not one way or uh, another, this is just a bump on the road. This is one major bump that I'm not, be- I'm not allowed to go over for two weeks. You will, man. On to happier news or happier topics. So when, when you do the dubs, uh, how do you do them? Like, what's the process? Oh, uh, that's, that's a pretty lengthy process. Um, normally, I would, like scan out and save a good section of uh, the comic or Tumblr uh, that I want to dub. I save it to a little folder so that I have these in correct order and numbered so that way it'll be all in this exact order and whatever. And um, I scan out and save a section of the Tumblr or if it's just a comic, dub, I save the comic. And after I get done with it, I take a look, I try to record sometimes it's all on one take and it'll have a lot of mistakes and i would try to redo them as best as i can and pretty much i just record i have a a, a studio mic that a, a former friend of mine sent me for my birthday at about uh, 2011 ish and it's been a pretty good uh, mic condenser and uh, i use that i record with audacity and then after i was done recording the stuff goes into Sony Vegas. For female voices, I try to pitch it up with the uh, audio plugins inside Sony Vegas. And I pretty much just spend time cropping, editing, adding extra details like uh, the uh, the funny bits about reactions and uh, thoughts about it. And for some odd reason, this scene reminded me of. And um, that kind of process will take, depending on how long it is, either – an hour or so to about um, maybe a lot more. I do know that it took me quite a while to put up one of the Molestia videos because it was time consuming. I do get fatigue and um, I ha- may have to take breaks. I also have to like either lie down or go to sleep or actually had to go somewhere and uh, get food and whatever. But uh, the process does take a while. And then after I was done, I check and tree checked. I sometimes pre-render some of the stuff because sometimes uh, when you pitch voices, it, the timing gets off, and then I just sit there, let it render, then as soon as it's done, upload it to YouTube, bam. Sounds like a pretty straightforward process, actually. Yeah, a bit. Hmm. Uh, where did the creepy molestia voice came from? It was a fluke, really. 
<laughs> I I knew for a fact that I will not be able to impersonate a Celestia for the life of me, so I just winged it. And just winging it, sounding like it was a pitched up squeaky voice with that kind of uh That's not a word like uh <laughs> You know, you completely nailed that combined with your constant uh fourth wall breaking jokes and like narrator inserts that that gave the video a very unique tone. Yeah. So Banzo, um you mentioned earlier that you had other people voicing for you too, right? So how was that? Like, did they record stuff for you and send it to you? Or do they record it on the spot with you? Mostly they record it and give it to me. I did know that uh, at one point we, I, um, I was working with a friend of mine because I also dabble in the Gmod community. Uh, uh, we was helping out this uh, new friend of ours who does a decent Sunset Shimmer impersonation for, I believe it was... Um, the video where Sunset pretty much gains the powers of, um, I can't remember for the life of me, but the, it was the only instance that I was actually on call coaching with my friend um, to uh, help out with how our VA would sound and uh, how to uh, tackle certain lines and whatever. It was a bit time consuming because we were trying to go for a spot on Sunset Shimmer up to a certain point and then the rest we just let it fly because she would be tr- she would be transformed and um, she wouldn't exactly sound the same. Ah, okay, okay. So that's the extent of working with someone online then? Yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. Mm, okay. So most of the dubs you do it by yourself then? Mostly, yeah. I've been trying to get voice actresses and actors uh, to help out with uh, this stuff because, well, after a while, I've been getting complaints that uh, even though I'm funny and all, uh, it gets a little tiresome dealing with one guy dubbing every voice. <laughs> uh, you ain't no little Kuribo then. Yeah, that's kind of sad. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. Well, at least you got feedback. That, that's good, right? Yeah. Even though some of it's kind of, you know, negative. Well, you are, you are exposing yourself on the internet, which is already uh, a petri dish of negativity and positivity. You just have to pick the constructive criticism out of all of that and then try to grow from there. Yeah, I pretty much learned that. I try. Um, so. You're doing good so far. So, uh, now that uh, you're here already on the MBS show, uh, what are your plans for the future? What do you have planned for uh, the future once the strike is gone and you can go back to upload your your stuff? Well, I'm currently just working on some random stuff to upload to the all channels for now. I'm still trying to gather lines for the comic dub uh, uh, with the uh, Anthro Fluttershy and everybody. I've I'm currently working on a random video because I decided to get a little bit into the uh, Toho fandom about a bunch of uh, PC games that are like 2D, 3D shooters that's got like a lot of bullets to dodge. <laughs> Except it's all about it's all about Lola Kong girls shooting at each other in the face with big giant lasers and magic balls and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. that. That's pretty much what every single anime is, isn't it? <laughs> well, Toho so. is just a, well, Toho is just a bunch of games. There's no official anime to it. It wouldn't be difficult to yeah. do. It, be, it won't be difficult to turn that into yeah. an anime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, some people have, have done fan animations of it, but uh, no official anime. Not only that, not only that, the creator didn't even want an official anime out of this. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, I, I'm just doing a, like a little Gary's Mod recreation of a typical of a, a certain Toho video, adding my little uh, quirks to it, and. Um, that's about all I got going for right now. I'm. You have quite a full plate, don't you? A bit. <laughs> that's uh, that's something that happens with this fandom all the time. I'm seeing here on your videos, you you at least got um, a minimum of a thousand plus viewers. At least. Yeah. It all depends on what I put on. If it's got pony, it's got a lot more views than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Ponies increase a lot. Well, I'm just seeing. Uh, you're pretty popular on the YouTube, then. Yeah. 
So, Gonzo, regarding your uh, relation with the mini arcade show, which is uh, a podcast that you you usually do weekly, what is your position with, with your position with them right now? Last time I heard you were kind of like you were still working with them. I'm just one of the co-hosts on there. I help out with talking with the guests and whatnot, and uh, I also try to bring in the guests that I can find and contact and they won't get scared away because i'm a guy or whatever not only i was a host there but i'm also uh i partake in two uh the uh mini arcade shows other two podcasts are sister podcasts basically the new illogical podcast which just aired on uh april fool's day with great results and soon we'll be airing our uh, Mini Arcade Show Gaming Review channel, which we rebranded from last year from Mini Arcade Show Gaming Review, which is kind of bleh, and branding it to Brain Dead Gamers. Pretty much we'll be like dealing with all gaming news, reviews, and uh, stuff like that. So you're basically expanding beyond the uh, beyond just being a, 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 a kind of like a brony podcast into a everything podcast. You're like branching out. A bit, yeah. Ah, oh, that's good. That's actually a very good idea. Um, there is nothing wrong about being just a brownie podcast. It's usually a good idea to uh, keep it uh, buried, like keep it peppered with a lot of different stuff to make it fun, yeah. make it entertaining. Yeah, because we we basically not only just interview bronies, we try to uh, interview. Everybody. We ended up interviewing some military bronies. Woo. We ended up interviewing some voiceover artists or voice actors. We've also interviewed a guy who creates custom uh, chainmail armor out of Arkansas, I believe. We've also talked with some of the Yeris Mata community contributors. We also talked to uh, people from the furry community. Mm -hmm. And um, we we're trying to get a hold of some gamers as well although they'll probably be on our uh brain dead gamers because that's more gaming things so yeah d b yeah basically branching out to other uh venues which is a good idea yeah um especially since i ended up getting a uh, word from my boss that it, for a while he was trying to uh, for a while he thought of trying to clean things up and try to uh expand our horizons a little bit and try to get ourselves out there and getting ourselves uh, known, uh, being invited mm -hmm. to like uh, cons, getting our own panels or tables or whatever. Uh, um, but um, after, he, after he soon found out that Equestria uh, LA uh, didn't want to do any more cons, uh, he just scrapped the idea and just went, you know what, maybe this was a bad idea. Because not only that, not only was, not only was um, this cleanup kind of was kind of impossible for me, because, <laughs> well, a lot of things. Is the way you are as well. It was literally too clean. It was just, I wasn't even allowed to talk about things with context. Mm. And, and I have to be censored and everything. I mean, we can't, and not only that, we wasn't even allowed to bring anybody with a hint of not safe for work uh, content. And uh, it was just kind of hard for me because I started getting connections and sadly, some, and sadly most of them dabble in not safe for work content well i do not safe for work content yeah that will be that will be kind of like a very unfortunate lost opportunity mm -hmm. true true yeah just it's a little more difficult for me oh after after he did hear after he did hear about a uh, question la my boss ended up saying you know what? We won't be able to be invited to this con because this con will never, it will never set again. Yeah, it's uh, like this con just I'm, way that just went under the truck. It's impossible to get, yeah. to, to go to it again because it's it's gone. Yeah. Of course, CLA is no yeah. more. Yeah, it's just I, I I only heard that uh, it was uh, there wasn't enough staff, so it was like yeah, that's not going to be possible. Um, and after hearing about that and hearing that, not only was I unable to fit into the whole uh, little clean aspect of everything, and he ended up hearing about all the, how the viewers weren't really thrilled about it, and um, it was a little too, you know, restrictive and everything. He was like, oh, maybe we should, maybe we should have stayed the same. So yeah, he's offering, he's offering another, he's offering to just go back to the way things were, although still not all not safe for work. And I'm told I'm not allowed to invite G Gary's Mod community uh, contributors anymore. 
because of a what happened on our last show was that unfortunately our guests absentmindedly shared the uh, live stream link to uh, this group on DA, which had a bunch of Gary's Mod contributors who uh, are sadly also not the very best in reputation. Um, and they literally came and ruined the streaming for everybody, He's spamming stuff and uh, just being totally, totally disrespectful to everybody. Mm. I don't understand that swarm mentality of going to a place and just wreck it. It's something that happens in real life. Like when there is some like manifestation on the street, you have a lot of these violent guys that just join in to destroy lamp, lamps, street lamps and uh, traffic signals and all that. It's like, what is the point? Same, the same way where some people will go into a, uh, into a stream or into a forum and uh, they will start spamming links or like memes or just having downright thrown mentality. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just totally disrespectful. Yeah, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't want to have somebody come to you at like a lunch hour at like a Dairy Queen or a McDonald's and just scream on the top of out of the top of his lungs right into your ear. Yeah, or even worse, have someone go at you and and throw your milkshake on the on the floor and put your hamburger on your head. It will be like, what's the point on that of that? It's like, why would you do that? It's and they, it's they it's just go simple. away doing the dancing the Macarena, and you're like, what the hell is wrong with these people? It's just, it's just, it's just, it's a habit in real life that'll make you look, that'll make you look criminal. Yeah, yeah, I, actually, you know what, that is punishable. If you do that in real life, they can put you in jail for that. It's just, it's just seriously, you wouldn't want to do this stuff in real life. Why the hell are you doing it on the internet? And don't give me that. That's not a word. About the, the gift, this, 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 this little theory that once you get on the internet, and you're dealing with a whole bunch of strangers who don't know who you are. It gets into your head that it, you can get away with almost cyber murder and nobody, and nobody will even pay attention. You don't get any consequences whatsoever. Well, I don't think we are as far as cyber murder. I hope, really. Like, no, honestly. I, well, no. Actually, it's no, it already... It's, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a, a, a metaphorically actually, speaking. No, but you know what? It actually it already happened. It happened. Uh, there was this, um, there was this couple, this married couple that married over World of Warcraft. And, uh, she got mad with him and she ended up deleting his account, thus killing his character in World of Warcraft. And actually, they arrested her. <laughs> they apprehended her for killing his, uh, her husband's character in WoW. I am not making this up. But, but James, I, I don't think she was charged for murder, but she was charged no, but for... No, the, the, the fact that they arrest, No, the fact that they arrested her, that they put her under custody because she killed a digital character, that still happened. I mean, yeah, yeah, she didn't go to jail. She didn't, she didn't go to, like, jurisdiction or anything, but they arrested... They put handcuffs on her <coughs> and they took her to jail. Guess on height. Uh, well, th that was for cyber crime, and cyber crime is a crime, nevertheless. She deleted a World of Warcraft account. She didn't in, 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 in she didn't like spied on the FBI or go to the CIA website. Come on, she broke into the guy's account. They are husband and wife. I'm pretty sure that they had a, access to their Warcraft work, Warcraft's account. They 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 met through the game. You know, it's ridiculous, Norman. It is ridiculous. Yeah, it is I ridiculous. know. I, I'm yeah. just. I I forgot the details, but I remember the story. But anyway, that's just that's just ridiculous. So, James, you got any more questions? Uh no. Nope. Completely out. I'm out. Ah, okay, cool, cool. So anyway, Gonzo, thank you for coming on to the show and sharing your story with us. That's it was pretty awesome and pretty interesting. Ah, oh, thanks to be here. So, Gonzo, where can they find you online? They can find me pretty much in a whole lot of places. Um, I'm mainly on YouTube. I got Mindless Gonzo and Mindless Gonzo Alt. Uh, mine can be found on Tumblr, uh, mindlessgonzodam.tumblr.com. Uh, my uh, DeviantArt and Ink Bunny for right now, which are both also the same thing. <laughs> Mindless Gonzo, I believe. <laughs> 
So basically, you like sketchy sound. Well, sketchy sound is everywhere then, and you're also Miles Gonzo. Miles Gonzo on everywhere then. Hey, I am also James Cork everywhere. <laughs> you have to think on sketchy. He's not even on the stream. I'm <laughs> sketchy because he he always uses that line because you can find me a sketchy sound on everywhere because I'm everywhere. You know, well, I'm a, the well, egotistical I'm Brit. A, well, I'm almost everywhere. I'm not on Ponyville Live or Everfree Network. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> it would be nice. It's though. cool. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. But anyway, Gonzo, thank you for coming on. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shoutouts. And my first shoutout goes to you, Gonzo. Thank you for coming on and share, sharing your stories and um, basically spending some time with your early schedule. <laughs> Yeah, let's just hope that I can wake up a little later next time. Sorry for pulling you out of bed, dude. Uh, uh, yeah, it would have been it would have been inevitable anyway. I I I don't know why, but I ended up waking up at like seven in the morning for some odd reason and wasn't able to sleep very well since. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So and also my second shout goes to you, James. Thank you for hosting the live stream chat and. You know, being being there for me. Ah, uh, don't worry, don't worry. I'm there for for you. That's what you pay me for, anyway. So, it's yeah. I pay you in magic cards. I pay you in magic cards. Don't forget. That. Oh wait, you're right. You are paying me. Oh, That's sh- not a word. That was actually Kevin. No, but you are actually paying me. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, fine, fine. Dude, okay. okay. Uh, and also to the live stream chat. Yay. Hey, no, like stream chat. You get a shout out too. <laughs> James, what about you? I want to give a shout out to Gonzo for getting up so soon and after after a, such a bad night's sleep that he told us that he didn't have a good sleep and still giving us a wonderful interview and trying to hold back the swearing, which, dude, you didn't really need to, but it, it, I highly appreciate it. Thank you so much for your effort. And. I want to give a shout out to Norman for uh, not finding me yet, despite me antagonizing some of the interviewers and uh, interviewees and pissing off almost everybody a few weeks ago. <laughs> uh, and I want to give a big shout out to the people on my stream because they're wonderful, they're lovely, I love them, they're great, uh, they keep me doing what I'm doing, they are so generous and awesome and I love you guys. And I couldn't be here without you, so big shout out to you. Thank you. We're all special. <laughs> hey Gonzo, what about you? I'm gonna give a shout out to my homies in Compton. <laughs> okay. Oh God. I'm sorry. Uh, a shout out to the people who managed to make it, and uh, for you guys, just for uh, thinking that I'm awesome, and I'm glad that you guys like the stuff that I put out, uh, even though some of them are kind of, uh, some, even though some of them are kind of weird and wondering how did this make it to YouTube, and. Um, <laughs> Remember, normal is boring. Weird is fun. I'm just, I'm just glad you guys put up with me. Yeah, shout out <laughs> oh, to all you guys who oh, put up with cool. me. <laughs> oh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. So, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshow@gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, uh, links will be provided in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The uh, show's account is at the MBS Show. Sorry, but we'll tweet about editing the show, especially this one. Yay, she's going to have so much fun. And you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I usually tweet stuff about toys, food, and Kit Kats. And what about you, James? Uh, you can find me on James Lower Dash Cork on Twitter. You can find me on jamescork.divinar.com. And you can check my Ask Pony Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. No, oh, Facebook. Be, <laughs> links will be provided in the show notes. So I am Norman Sanzo. And I have been James Cork. And I'm Mindless Gonzo. And we'll see you next week with less Rainbow Rocks. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. But Rainbow Rocks are so tasty. Bye bye. Oh. <laughs>
the book is a prequel to the movie and the shorts are related to the book. And that's cool. That's cool in my books. Ayo. Um, he just went Ayo? Yeah, he went Ayo. That's yeah. so 2000s. <laughs> oh, this is gonna... No. But anywho, <laughs> let, let's move on to the next news. So that way it'll be all in this exact order and whatever. And um, hang on, I need to move a little bit. Uh, a little stiff because I'm sitting in a recliner that it's getting a little old and it's making me kind of stiff. 